guys, it's Kayla and Jim. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. What are we discussing today? Today we are going to talk about the 1974 Xenia, Ohio tornado, the F5 tornado that occurred as part of the super outbreak that occurred April 3rd and April 4th of 1974. And again, that super outbreak, there was over 140 tornadoes across 13 states, including Canada. And this F5 in Xenia was actually the highest rated of all the tornadoes of that event. Yep, and if you guys haven't already seen, we did a full case study breaking down the 1974 super outbreak. If you want to check out that video first or after this one, it'll be linked in that corner up there. Like with that case study and all of the rest of the ones, all of the sources that we looked at to put this case study together will be linked down below. Also like in that video and all the rest, we do a synoptic setup for the event as well as drilling down to the single storm that produced the tornado, and we're going to get to that. But before we get started, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday. So let's get into the Synoptic Scale Meteorological Setup. On April 2nd, 1974, an upper level trough was rapidly moving over the Great Basin area of the western United States and deepening. An associated surface low pressure center was located over southeastern Utah with a cold front extending southwestward through northwestern Arizona and southern California. Over the southern Rocky Mountains, a very strong mid-tropospheric jet stream was present and would contribute to intensifying the low pressure center, deepening it 10 millibars as it moved over eastern Colorado. The low continued to deepen as it moved eastward into central Kansas during the early morning hours of April 3rd. As the cold front continued moving eastward, a rapid influx of low-level moist air from the Gulf of Mexico was surging northward. Combined with the strong upper-level jet stream, this would set the stage for the super outbreak that was to ensue over the next 24 hours, including the Xenia, Ohio F5 tornado. At 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time on April 3rd, the strong upper-level trough had extended over most of the continental United States with several short waves rotating around the base of the trough. The low pressure center over Kansas deepened to 980 millibars and winds at the 850 millibar level increased to 50 knots or 58 miles per hour over the deep south, advecting significant moisture into the region. During the day, the low pressure center would move rapidly northeastward towards Lake Michigan. The surface cold front continued moving eastward rapidly across the mid-Mississippi and Ohio valleys. Cold, dry air swept in and collided with the warm, moist Gulf air established over the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. The collision of the air masses would eventually develop at least three extremely intense tornado-producing squall lines. It was the second squall line that would develop the Xenia, Ohio F5 tornado. As the morning of April 3rd ensued, severe weather watches were being issued by the National Severe Storms Forecast Center, or the NSSFC, across the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. Around 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time, April 3rd, a new band of scattered thunderstorms developed over eastern Arkansas and Missouri. Winds started backing at the low levels while daytime heating caused rapid destabilization of the lower atmosphere. Cool mid-level advection had occurred over the warm sector ahead of the band which strengthened the lapse rates, aiding in rapid upward motion. By 1 p.m., Cape values were in excess of 2,500 joules per kilogram over the lower Ohio Valley. With favorable wind profiles due to the backing of low-level winds, helicity values increased significantly to over 230 meters squared per second squared. All of these combined are very favorable for the formation of tornadic supercells. Between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., several intense supercells formed along this second band across Illinois, Indiana, and northern Kentucky. As the afternoon progressed, several of these storms formed and became significant, long-lived supercells that produced many strong or violent tornadoes. This would include the Xenia, Ohio F5. So there's the meteorological setup for the day. We have a strong deepening low pressure center that's moving into the area. And then we also have the uh, destabilization with sunshine. We've also got, so we got cape values that are increasing. We've got helicity values that are increasing. So things are starting to set up across the Xenia, Ohio area. Now let's look at the storm specifics. Around 4.10 p.m., the Dayton, Ohio Weather Service Office issued a tornado warning for Montgomery and Greene counties, effective until 5 p.m. local time. The warning was based on a hook echo 
a radar signature of a rotating storm and possible tornado, 25 miles northeast of Cincinnati, moving northeastward. Around 4.33 p.m., a strong supercell formed a tornado near Bellbrook, Ohio, located southwest of Xenia. The tornado grew to a moderate size and intensified as it moved northeast at about 50 miles per hour, or 80 kilometers per hour. The tornado displayed a multiple vortex structure as it approached Xenia, with multiple public reports indicating up to three separate funnels. Gil Whitney, a weather specialist for WHIO-TV in Dayton, Ohio, was alerting viewers of the tornado moving into Montgomery and Greene counties, where Xenia is located. Gil was showing viewers the radar's hook echo within the storm as it moved quickly toward town. He was able to give viewers a few minutes lead time before the tornado struck. As the very violent tornado entered the western part of Xenia, winds were in the F5 range, leveling the Windsor Park and Arrowhead subdivisions. Entire rows of brick homes were swept away, and very little, if any, debris was left behind in some areas. At 4.40 p.m., the tornado reaches the central parts of Xenia. Apartment buildings, homes, businesses, churches and schools, including Xenia High School, were destroyed. Students in the high school were practicing for a play that day. Fortunately, they took shelter in the main hallway seconds before the tornado dropped a school bus onto the stage where they had just been practicing. As the tornado moved through the center of town, it lifted and blew over several Penn Central freight train cars, toppled headstones in Cherry Grove Cemetery, and heavily damaged or destroyed numerous businesses in the downtown business district. An A&W root beer stand was flattened, killing several people that were there. This would become the state's highest tornadic death toll for a single building since 1953. The tornado wound up passing just west of the courthouse, which did sustain some exterior damage. As the tornado continued past downtown Xenia, it entered the Pinecrest Garden District. This area would experience extensive damage. Continuing northeast past Xenia, the tornado would heavily damage several campus and residential buildings of Wilberforce University. The tornado would also impact Central State University, causing considerable damage as well as toppling a water tower there. Shortly afterwards, the tornado would weaken and dissipate. There are, however, a few discrepancies in the storm reports and official surveys concerning the path length. The Storm Prediction Center and National Climatic Data Center, now NCEI, Surveys agreed on a single tornado over the entire 31.3 mile damage path from Xenia in Greene County to South Vienna in Clark County. Others, such as the local Wilmington, Ohio National Weather Service office, believes based on their observations that the main Xenia tornado traveled only 16 miles, then lifted north of Cedarville in Greene County, and a second tornado touched down for another seven miles in Clark County. A few days after the event, President Richard Nixon would make an unannounced visit to Xenia. Upon viewing the devastation, he said, As I look back over the disasters, I saw the earthquake in Anchorage in 1964. I saw the hurricanes, Hurricane Camille in 1969 down in Mississippi, and I saw Hurricane Agnes in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. And it is hard to tell the difference among them all. But I would say in terms of destruction, just total devastation, this is the worst I've seen. President Nixon immediately declared Xenia a disaster area. Although the Federal Disaster Relief Act was already introduced in 1973, it still had not passed Congress. The 1974 super outbreak disaster helped accelerate the passage of the act through Congress in 1974. Over the next several months, Xenia would recover from the storm with the help of the Red Cross and the Ohio National Guard. Most of the town was quickly rebuilt afterward. In summary, the tornado that struck Xenia, Ohio, stands as the deadliest individual tornado of the 1974 super outbreak. It traveled a minimum of 16 miles. The maximum width was a half a mile, or 0.8 kilometers wide. 32 people lost their lives, and about 1,150 people were injured. In addition to the direct fatalities, two Ohio Air National Guardsmen deployed for disaster assistance were killed on April 17th when a fire swept through their temporary barracks in a furniture store. Their deaths were added to a memorial in downtown Xenia to honor them, bringing the total to 34 deaths. 
Roughly half of the buildings in town were heavily damaged or destroyed. Damage was estimated at 100 million US dollars, or 602 million US dollars today. There were no tornado sirens present. However, after the tornado, 10 sirens were installed across Xenia. A 10-month study of the 1974 super outbreak was performed by Dr. Ted Fujita and team. They determined that the Xenia tornado was the worst of the 148 tornadoes that touched down during the outbreak. Dr. Fujita's initial assessment of the Xenia tornado was rated an F6, but was revised to F5 as they categorized F6 damage as inconceivable. So out of all 148 tornadoes that occurred during that day, Xenia wasn't just the strongest one, but so strong that they initially gave it an estimate of F6. Yeah. Incredible. F6. Inconceivable damage. I mean, let's think about this. F5 is just absolutely devastating. F6, if it could even be quantitatively assessed, yeah. You know, and you can put inconceivable in the mindset to be able to say this is inconceivable damage. I mean, just incredible. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I don't know even how. Don't know. How do you how do you think about that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like F five is already like there's no foundation to the house left. Like everything is swept off. The trees are uprooted. Basically, the land is completely flat. I don't know how you go one step beyond that, but uh, that they were even considering doing an F6. It just goes to show you how bad the damage was in Xenia. Another thing of interest was I, I thought that um, President Richard Nixon showing up and taking a look at, at the damage and everything that occurred there and comparing it to other major uh, natural disasters yeah. and saying that this was even worse. I mean, Hurricane Camille, Hurricane Agnes, the earthquake in Anchorage, you know, all those were huge events. Those and some to, heavy hitters, yeah. And to compare this event to those and saying that this exceeds that in terms of the damage, that's just incredible. Not only that, but this was an entire, like, this is the super outbreak. When people say the super outbreak, like, this is, this is the one. And to have one tornado, not, he's not looking at the entire event, he's just looking at this one tornado and saying this is worse than everything. While the rest of the country is also going through the super outbreak is Wow. One thing you also probably noticed in that was that uh, there's some disagreement on the path length. There are some government entities saying that it was one continuous path for like 31, 32 miles, and other ones saying, nah, I think it was only 16 miles that went through Xenia and then it lifted and another one came down the next county over. While we were doing our research, I was not able to find like an official, like everybody had an official, but it was a different path length. and. Also, if you add the 16 and then the, the 7, it does not equal the 31.3 of the first one. So we're not exactly sure how the math works out <laughs> there, but we included both. I mean, it's a minimum of 16. It might be all the way up to 32 miles. Down below, you also see one of the papers that Dr. Ted Fujita wrote about this event. And going through that, I was not able to find an official path length that he saw either. So maybe... Maybe I just missed it or something, but if you want to check out the paper, it'll be down below. So there you have it, the 1974 Xenia, Ohio F5 tornado. Again, down below will be all the links that we used to put together this case study. Down there, you'll also find the links to our website and our school of weather. If you're really interested in severe weather or learning about the basics of meteorology, but you're not sure if you want to go to school for it, checking out the school of weather down below will give you a great start. As well as checking out our weather adventures on Facebook and Instagram. And a shout out to all those that participated in our survey for what you wanted to see. And this was actually the second tornado case study. Um, so we had a chance to take care of it and get it done. So we were excited about it. Yes, there's still a very long list of case studies that you guys have suggested and we are chipping away at it. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. We're talking about coffee oh, okay. and how I need more coffee. It's all out. It's empty. <laughs> Our coffee maker broke this morning.